Now the next is 12 principle. So principle number one says our highest priority, I know this is a, a little bit of the theory, but it is very important to you know, know all these things. If you guys want, we can um, like cover it. Uh, if you think that we are spending too much time on this, let me know. We can cover it fast as well. So our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. What does it mean? So you think two things, uh, early and continuous delivery. Okay, why early? Because early is important because, uh, you know, as early uh, as you go to your customers, you start getting early feedbacks as well. Okay, take the example of, uh, okay, the same example which I gave you. If you go to your customer after six months, you, uh, you get the feedback after six months. If you go to them, you will get the feedback after a month. And if you are working on um, one week or uh, two week sprint or releasing uh, almost daily or weekly, you start getting early feedbacks. You save more money and time to improve your product. And continuous delivery. Continuous delivery means uh, don't give everything in one go because it is going to take uh, a long time. Just uh, break your product into small pieces, small, small features, and uh, in each and every version, keep giving something. So this is how your your customers uh, uh, would be satisfied with the features they are getting. And it will also give you an idea that which kind of features they are liking and uh, what should be your, uh, uh, you know, the direction of uh, basically adding new features. Just take the example of Paytm. When they initially launched, they uh, they came up with some cashback kind of a scheme. Okay, uh, I believe the Paytm, uh, the way it looks like today, probably they would not have thought about it uh, six, seven years back. But based on the you know the the way people are using it, what are the features they should add? What are the features they should not add? That kind of feedbacks basically give you a lot of information, which helps you to plan your further steps. Let's say it's welcome changing requirements even late in the development. Agile process harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. So even if the requirements are coming late, welcome them because market is changing very fast. Just take the example of your uh, smartphones that we are having today. I remember like uh, after, uh, you know, before, uh, 17, 18 years back when I started using the Galaxy phone, it was hardly having uh, one MB of memory and uh, the SMS capacity was, I think, 20 or something. After 20, uh, you, you know, your inbox is still, uh, sorry, full. And if you are not deleting a couple of uh, messages, you won't be able to receive new one. After some time, people have started, you know, the, the, phones with the 10 mb or 100 mb were also launched now we talk in terms of gb right so 256 gb or 512 gb is not a big deal today just take the example of camera initially there was no camera in the phone then they introduced a camera then front camera then two cameras in the back or you can say rear camera then three now we are having four cameras so market is changing very fast very fast and our users are also getting uh, you know used to of that thing now we are not going to like any phone you can say which was the best seller maybe three years back just take the service like amazon zomato swiggy people just order food and uh, they don't have patience to wait for that Okay, now we we want everything very fast, very quick. It's not just products which are in, uh, evolving. The expectation of the users are also evolving with the same speed, and that is why it becomes really important that we that we accept any change which is coming, even the late. Otherwise, we would be out of the market. We don't want to, uh, you know, we don't want to deliver the outdated product. Or people are not going to use it. Just think these uh, these principles are written in 2001. The examples I am giving they are definitely from today's world, but these things were you know even relevant at that time. Deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference of shorter time scale. So we have already discussed about it that what's the benefit of uh, delivering anything in a weeks or in a shorter time scale. 
we get faster feedback, we get opportunity to improve faster as well. Now, business people and developers must um, work together throughout the project. Why it is important? Because the business people, if I say business people are the people who understand uh, the end user very well, who understand the market very well, where the, where the developers, their uh, core, you can say knowledge area is the technology. They, they understand the architecture, they understand the languages, database, these kind of stuff but they don't uh, know that uh, what we can sell in the market, what customers are demanding. And if we are getting the requirements in the form of documents, there would definitely be a gap. And that is why the business people and developers should uh, you know, interact frequently and uh, development people should understand that what business people are actually expecting from this product what they are trying to achieve from that product. Build projects around motivated individuals, give, give them the environment and support the need and trust them to get the job done. So when I say motivated individuals, so a study says if we give three things to, um, to the um, people, they feel more motivated. And these three things are uh, the autonomy, give them the freedom, mastery that means all the knowledge which is required to build a product and purpose if you keep guiding people that uh, you work on this you work on that obviously they will they will keep feeling that okay this is your work they are not responsible this is, this is something you want and uh, i just have to work on it as a resource but this should not be the thinking if you want people to be motivated give them the freedom to decide that what is the best way to develop this product but in order to uh, you know decide what is best for the product it is very important that you should have knowledge around it so give them all the technical and domain knowledge and rather guiding them step by step give them the purpose and let team collaborate now they have purpose they have knowledge they have freedom now let them decide what best can be done for it. The most efficient and effective method of conveying information uh, to and within the development team is face-to-face -face conversation. So yes, face-to-face -face conversation is always good. Uh, even if we are working as a distributed team, like few people are working from India, few from US or UK or anywhere, um, then at least we should invest in uh, the good communication tools, maybe some good chat engines or where people can have video calls to you know, develop a good understanding. Microsoft Teams is a very good example for that. So these kind of interactive tools, at least we should invest in if we are not uh, able to, you know, having face-to-face -face, uh, conversation every time. As I told you that these things were written in 2001. And uh, yes, maybe by that time, the distributed team was not in that much culture. Working software is the primary measure of progress. So we have already talked um, about a lot of examples where we can say that working software is the primary measure of the progress because your, your software should be able to solve the user's problem. Also, the traditional way of working where we used to work on um, you know the six, one, six months or one year uh, long project, during that time, what used to happen, like let's say your development is uh, going on for three months or four months. After that, testing is going on for three, four months. Integration, testing, maintenance, there were a lot of phases there. Um, till the product is completed, people usually used to talk in terms of percentage. The development is 60% completed or 80% completed. Same way, testing is let's say 50% completed or something. Um, it was actually not giving us the right picture because still we are not having anything working that we can see that it is, you know, it's solving some problem. No, we could not see. Um, and how we are dealing uh, with this kind of problem by working in the iterative way? Because here in each and every iteration or each and every sprint, we are developing a small piece of working software. Now we know even if we are 5% or 10% completed, we know that, okay, that 10% is 
actually developed integrated tested and working now in new version maybe we can add three four or five percent more features but at least we know that these are the working softwares they are not just the percentage the 70 percent development completed or testing completed they are the actual thing agile process promotes uh, sustainable development the sponsors developers and users should be able to maintain the constant pace indefinitely so when we say sustainable pace basically sustainable pace means team should be comfortable happy with the work number two your customer should be able to consume the work being developed by your development team and number three your customer should be happy with the quality so if we are having these three things then only we can maintain the sustainable pace sustain i think we all know that sustain means something that uh, that can last longer if, we, if our teams are not comfortable they are overloaded obviously they uh, we we cannot run the show forever in this way your teams are not comfortable working on the weekend or uh, working late night definitely they 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 won't be able to give the 100 percent in this situation there are chances that teams are going to compromise with the quality as well because of the workload and all and which is uh, ultimately going to result in the form of uh, production defect or uh, other quality issues with the customers in this way obviously we won't be able to sustain now the work your team is producing the customers in the market are not able to consume it we are doing over production or something okay so we are building something but we are not able to sell it even in that case team won't be able to make any profit and uh, sorry the business won't be able to make any profit and even this model cannot sustain and if we are compromising with the quality then again customers are not going to buy your product in order to develop a sustainable pace team should be comfortable the development team or whoever are involved in the development they should be comfortable your customer should be able to consume the work you're developing and they should be with the quality continuous attention to the technical excellence and good design enhances agility so yes technical excellence is very important and a lot of new technologies are coming if we are not uh, learning them uh, our knowledge would be uh, limited and also over the solutions we are providing they would also be you know very limited in terms of usability or uh, can say efficiency so it is very important that team focuses on the technical excellence as well simplicity the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential can anybody tell me how maximizing the amount of work not done can help you see maximizing the amount of work can help but maximizing the amount of work not done how does this can help any guesses no idea remember our working agreement we agreed that uh, it won't be a one-way communication so that like whatever we have done uh, is you know accurate and you know there is no rework is required uh, even if it is cost of maximizing the work not done okay i assume that we all are having the television at our home right Yes, so have you ever seen the remote of your television? I'm not talking about the your Amazon Fire Stick remote. I'm not talking about the Tata Sky or any DTH remote. I'm talking about your TV remote only. It is from Sony, LG, Samsung or whatever. How many buttons are there in that remote? Approximate. 30 to 40 buttons at least. How many do you use? Maximum five. Hardly four or five, right? We don't uh, even use channels from our uh, television remote nowadays. We we use our Dish TV, Tata Sky, or Amazon Fire Stick remotes for that. But still, we are having a lot of buttons in our TV remote. What we hardly use is uh, maybe uh, power on, power off, volume up, down, some picture or uh, picture or sound setting. Not more than that. But still, we have numbers from zero to nine that we never use, never and a lot of other buttons but still uh, you know companies are uh, building that kind of remotes so philips basically uh, ran a survey around it uh, and uh, after that survey they came up to a conclusion that um, we can simply remove 70 to 80 percent of the buttons from this remote because people never use it 
and they came up with a simplified design. 